So I'm going over the four named elasticities. We know that an elasticity is just a measurement of a behavioral response. And it's just going to be the percent change in, in the dependent variable divided by the percent change in the independent variable. Um, and normally we just say the elasticity of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable because there's all kinds of behavioral responses we can measure. But four of them are particularly dear to economists because they relate to supply and demand curves, which we love. So it's worth discussing these four. The most common is the elasticity of demand or price elasticity of demand. And that's the, the one you hear about the most among economists, probably. And this one measures um, a situation where the price is the independent variable. So you're, you change the price and you want to know how many, how many, if you increase the price, how many fewer products will people demand. So the quantity demanded is the dependent variable. And this is going to be the elasticity that measures what happens as you move along, uh, along a demand curve. So if you, if you set the price here, um, and you're considering changing the price, so you're considering increasing the price, which happens in um, if there's any kind of market power, like in monopoly models or um, oligopoly models or monopolistic competition models, how many, when you increase the price, how many fewer people are going to buy because of that price increase? And the elasticity of demand measures that. So the elasticity of demand is really measuring the shape of the demand curve. It's not measuring any kind of change in the demand curve at all. Second kind of price that you hear a lot about is the income elasticity of demand. And here, the, the independent variable is income. So as people's income increases, let's say during an economic expansion, um, what happens to the demand curve? So this one's actually measuring a shift in the demand curve. When, when, when we end a recession and go into an expansion and everybody's incomes goes up, how many more iPhones do people, does each household demand? And so this is measuring how big is the change in demand in response to an increase in income. So if that elasticity is really big, then we're going to have the demand curve shift out a whole lot when incomes go up. If that elasticity is really small, then the demand curve is only going to go up a little bit when people's incomes go up. So we know elasticity has two parts. It has direction and magnitude. The direction of the income elasticity of demand, when income goes up, the demand curve goes up. So it, it's a positive elasticity. And the magnitude of that elasticity depends on the kind of product out there. So that's income elasticity of demand. Cross price elasticity of demand, um, this one is also going to measure how much does the demand curve shift, but in this case, it's in response to the competitor's price. So if Samsung decides to increase their price, what do we expect to happen to the demand curve? And let me do this one in, um, in red, so that it's a different color. So if Samsung decides to increase their price, So what's going to happen to the demand curve for iPhones? Well, iPhones are going to become more popular as people move over to the substitute, so people move between markets. So we're going to have an increase in the demand for iPhones when Samsung increases their price. So which direction does the cross-price elasticity go? It, it's going to be positive because if Samsung increases their prices, iPhone will experience an increase in their demand curve. But it's also measuring a, a shift in the demand curve rather than a movement along the demand curve. So um, it's saying when Samsung increases their prices, do we have a really big increase in iPhones or a really small increase in iPhones? And that probably depends on how close these substitutes are. If these two are almost exactly the same in everybody's eyes, then there's going to be a really big increase in demand for iPhones when Samsung increases their prices. But if people view Samsung's as unique, they have features that iPhone doesn't have, this is sort of a completely separate thing, then when Samsung increases their prices, iPhone will only experience a small increase in demand. So the last one that it tends to be covered in textbooks is the elasticity of supply. And of course, as you might imagine, this is almost exactly uh, it's the counterpart of elasticity of demand, so we're going to be moving along the supply curve. This says if you increase the price, 
how, uh, how many, how does the quantity supplied change? So it's measuring a movement along that supply curve. And those are four elasticities that it's super useful to know.